I am way less now than I did 26 years ago when we got married. <laughs> Have you been watching more and more people benefit from a plant-based diet and wondering if it could help your unique situation? In this video, I'm going to show you how I helped two real people for the past 90 days transition from a standard American diet of hot dogs and hamburgers and pizza and spaghetti to a plant-based diet and the health outcomes they achieved. Just because some of these dietary approaches have worked with my clients does not necessarily mean that it's going to provide you with the same benefits. So stay optimistic, but be realistic at the same time. I'm so excited about today's video because for those of you who don't know, I began this channel in the first place because of the benefits that a plant-based diet was able to provide me in my life and with my health status. I went from being bedridden on 11 different medications with severe autoimmune issues, among other things, to completely regaining my health in a matter of years through nutritional excellence, through a whole food plant-based diet. I feel like I've been given another chance and I wanna use that chance to help other people make this transition and overcome the barriers to a healthier lifestyle. So as I mentioned, the footage you're gonna be watching in this video was taken over a 90 day period. So these results may or may not be typical, depending upon how closely you adhere to the diet, what kind of health status you're in beforehand and what your physiology is like. But from what I have experienced in the majority of clients that I have coached through this process, these results are in fact fairly typical. So in all, this is about a six video series. So if you wanna see anything more in depth of what I'm about to show you, you can go ahead and watch those videos as they come up in the months to come. But until then, I'm gonna provide you with the highlights of the basic structure that we used for the grocery shopping, the meal prepping, the meal planning, as well as the 30, the 60, and the 90 day helper. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's get to know these two amazing people that I had the pleasure of working with. So Bill and Vicki are both 65. They've been married over 26 years, and they're both extremely health conscious individuals. They just never had the right tools or information to work with. Like so many other people, they rely on their doctors and magazines and the latest fad diets to learn how to properly nourish themselves. But unfortunately, these are just not reliable sources. And at this stage in our history, you really have to do your own digging and your own research and come up with your own consensus on how to best care for yourself because everybody's coming at you with what you're supposed to be eating, how you're supposed to be exercising, how many hours of sleep you should get per night. Everybody's gonna be different when it comes down to it, but there are definitely some major foundational principles that all of us can follow. So originally, Vicki had come to me because she had several health issues that she needed help with. She was overweight. She particularly wanted to get rid of her belly fat. She had a history of heart disease in her family, so she was very nervous about her current trajectory on the standard American diet and whether or not that would lead her to the same fate as some of her family members. So it was very important to her that I provide her with foods that were going to maybe relieve those blockages in her arteries, lower her cholesterol, her triglycerides, her trans fats, her saturated fats. She also had severe arthritis in her hands and she's an avid gardener and landscaper. So it was very difficult for her to have a full quality of life with these ailments. So I was able to put together a diet for Vicki that lowered her weight, her cholesterol, her triglycerides, her saturated fat, her trans fat, as well as her inflammatory markers to assist with each of these major ailments. Now her husband, as sweet as he is, went along for the journey, not having any real expectations, but came out with just as many health benefits in the end as you'll see. But I wanna provide the caveat that during these 90 days, Bill was in fact on a blood pressure medication. So I had to make sure he was communicating very carefully with his doctor to make sure that if there were any fluctuations, if his blood pressure was getting too low, he needed to reduce the dosage or get off of it completely. Thankfully, that is a benefit of this diet, but at the same time, you don't wanna be taking a medication that lowers your blood pressure if what you're eating is already helping you to naturally lower your blood pressure, getting you to a state of having a blood pressure that's so low that it's detrimental to your health and you can't maintain consciousness. <laughs> so if you're considering this diet or any healthy lifestyle change, make sure you speak with your doctor about any contraindications when it comes to medications. 
I tell all my weight loss clients to speak with their doctor ahead of time to make sure that they are for one on board, but for two, get all of their uh, metabolic labs taken. So their cholesterol, their blood glucose, everything needs to be measured ahead of time. So not only their doctor can monitor it and keep an eye on them, but so they can see the benefits from prior to the diet to 90 days after initiating the diet and seeing that dramatic difference in their health outcomes. It's so helpful to see something measured on paper stating whether or not you succeeded in your endeavor. So highly, highly, highly recommend keeping your doctor in the loop and getting those biomarkers ahead of time, as well as throughout your transition to track your progress. So thankfully my clients were local. So we were able to go to the grocery store together and carry out their first meal prepping session together. So if you're considering this lifestyle, I'm sure you've thought about the difficulty of grocery shopping when it comes to learning a whole new set of foods and how to prepare and cook with them. So what I like to teach people is there's six major food groups, right? When it comes to a plant-based diet, legumes, whole grains, nuts and seeds, fruits, veggies, herbs, and spices. As long as you are getting plenty of variety in each of those areas, you literally cannot go wrong with this diet. You likely will not become deficient in anything as long as you're sticking to this strategy. If you're finding value in this video so far, make sure you give it a like. It really helps to push my video out to more viewers. So it might be a little weird at first going to these newer areas of the grocery store, but as soon as you get a feel for where each item is and what your go-tos are and and come up with a strategy, it really becomes second nature, just like the old way you used to grocery shop. So I like to tell people to focus on the perimeter of the grocery store. There may be a couple things here and there that you're gonna get from the center of the grocery store, those more processed items. But for the most part, 80 to 90% of your groceries are going to be produce. So you really don't need to venture further than that. Just pick up plenty of greens, different fruits, different veggies. You're gonna be using these in salads, soups, stir fries, snacks. And as soon as you get the hang of things, you're gonna be able to put these in every single meal because these are the most nutrient dense, most nutritious, most healthy foods on the planet. So you really wanna incorporate them with every single meal. Otherwise you're missing a huge opportunity every time you eat something that's not packed with these antioxidants, phytochemicals, fiber. So many benefits come from these powerhouses. If you want more specifics on the strategy that I typically provide my clients, when it comes to plant-based grocery shopping, make sure you check out this video here, but you may have to wait a couple weeks if you're watching this video when it first comes out because I need some time to produce it. If you find yourself struggling with this transition or losing those excess pounds, make sure you click my link in the description box below and schedule a free 45 minute consultation with me so we can get started on your health journey. All right, there's my shameless plug. Let's get back to the video. The next thing I wanna talk about is so often overlooked and that's the pantry makeover. You're basically going to be throwing out everything with a label to some extent. Everything with salt, sugar, and oil, any food that wasn't naturally grown is not going to be something you're going to want to put in your body. Not now, not ever. Especially if you are suffering with medical issues or excess weight. Processed and convenience foods are just going to lead you down the same path you're on. So what you wanna do is clean out your pantry, your freezer, your fridge, your spice rack, everything that is going to have detrimental chemicals, preservatives, texturizers, and of course, salt, sugar, and oil. And I know your kitchen's gonna look super bare at first, but as soon as you bring home all of these plant-based groceries, you will restock and replenish. There are in fact many healthy condiments that you can eat on this diet. Things like vinegar, hummus, salsa, mustard, herbs and spices. There is so much variety. There are so many species of plants that you will literally not be able to try all of them in a single lifetime. So don't ever worry about feeling deprived or like you're missing out on something because you're not eating animals and convenience foods. Those foods are so limiting. So thankfully, Bill and Vicki were great participants in this part of the process. Vicki did a wonderful job. I'm very proud of her. <laughs> She's going to have 
quite an interesting week um, coming up here and I will keep you guys posted on that outcome. I was able to assist them in figuring out which items needed to be removed and which items were perfectly healthy. Like canned beans without salt, for instance, or whole grains, or different seasonings that don't have any salt in them. I'm sure you don't have to throw out your entire pantry, but for the most part, it probably has to go, <laughs> at least for the time being. And I highly recommend keeping these items either in the garbage would be the best place. Or if you absolutely cannot let go of them at this point and you're still just kind of experimenting and then feel free to put them like in the garage or somewhere where you're not going to be tempted to eat them because if they're in your house, they're likely in your mouth. From the wise words of Chef AJ. If you guys haven't checked out her channel, make sure you do that, especially if you are adapting to this lifestyle. She interviews all of the doctors, dietitians, dermatologists, gastroenterologists, anybody and everybody who has knowledge about this field of lifestyle medicine is going to be on her show. So I will link her channel in the description box below if you're interested. So the next thing we did after the grocery shopping and the pantry makeover was dive in to their first meal prepping on a plant-based diet. So this can get super overwhelming if you've never done it before. It's just a strategy that a lot of people who follow this lifestyle like to use because it's better to have batch cooked leftovers in your fridge and in your freezer that are healthy that you can go to and heat up whenever you need them as opposed to coming home from a busy day, stressed out, not knowing what you're gonna eat and end up eating you know, some fast food on the way home or something. So this is just a way to always, always, always have a plan. And let's face it, the easier choice is always going to be the optimum choice. So make the healthy choice the easy and optimum choice. So some great things that you wanna meal prep when you're first starting this diet are things like soups, because you can literally throw everything and anything into that pot, heat it up, or press the soup button in the pressure cooker even better. And with a matter of hours, you have this delicious tasting soup that you can eat throughout the whole week. Another great option is to meal prep salads. Now, this diet is going to require a ton of large containers. Vicki will tell you firsthand, you are going to want to store tons and tons of food. So the bigger the storage, the better. I actually have a link below for like the 40 cup salad container I use on a weekly basis that keeps my salad fresh the entire week and I never have to make another one. It's just assembled and ready to go every day. That makes a huge difference in your decision making when it comes to healthy choices. Other things that we prepped on this day were beans, whole grains. I also encourage them to chop up plenty of fresh fruits and veggies that they can have on hand for snacks. And as I was leaving this day, I showed her how to start her slow cooker overnight oatmeal so she could have a huge pot of oatmeal for the whole week. So there you go, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the whole week, all in one day. Other easy week one starter meals are things like smoothies because it's really difficult to mess up a smoothie. You just throw everything in there, <laughs> blend it up, and you're ready to go out the door. But with smoothies, you want to be careful. You don't want to make it all fruit. Make sure you get some greens in there and some either tofu or some beans or some lentils, some kind of legume to really satiate you. Other easy meals to adapt to from a standard American diet to a plant-based diet are things like chili, potato dishes, stir fries, curries, burritos, and Buddha bowls, any kind of bowl really. Just throw in your grain, your greens, your veggies, and some kind of condiment on top. People make this diet so complicated, but it doesn't have to be. You don't need some extravagant recipe for every meal of the day. Think about the way you eat right now. You probably have a few go-tos that you utilize throughout the week if you cook your own food. We don't eat something different for every single meal every day of the week and then start over with new recipes the following week. That is exhausting and really expensive. So you're likely going to have leftovers. You're likely going to eat the same meals. When you find something that's familiar and that you're comfortable with making, you tend to make the same thing over and over or in slightly different variations. It's no different on this diet. You just find your favorites, stick to them, and then gradually experiment and work out from there. But I do wanna mention some stipulations when it comes to meal planning because you always wanna start with some kind of starch. You don't ever wanna feel deprived or hungry because that totally defeats the purpose of nutrition. You 
always need to be satiated, otherwise you're not meeting your needs. It's like asking somebody to breathe less air. It just is not something that your body is capable of. Sooner or later, you're going to binge on some kind of food that you would rather you didn't and be in a worse off place than you were when you started. So starches are going to keep you feeling full, keep your blood sugars down, keep your appetite suppressed. These are gonna be the bulk of your calories. When I say starches, I mean things like potatoes, whole grains, like rice, quinoa, amaranth, or you can use potatoes, beans, lentils. These are going to be your starches. From there, you include as many veggies as you can, whether raw or cooked, fruits, a tiny bit of nuts or seeds. For people who are interested in the weight loss aspect, maybe no nuts and seeds at all, as long as you're eating plenty of those green leafy vegetables to get your trans fatty acids, particularly your omega-3s. And the condiments are just bonuses, the herbs and spices. These are gonna be a lot of your anti-inflammatory um, go-tos. So things like turmeric and ginger, Vicki is taking a ton of those into her diet to take care of that arthritis she um, was experiencing in her hands so profoundly. If you are at all nervous about putting these meals together on your own and wondering whether or not you're going to be deficient in your protein or your fats or calcium or a different mineral or vitamin, then there is an app called Chronometer that you can use for free and it will track all of your different vitamins, minerals, and macronutrients, like your fats, your protein, and your um, carbohydrate, just to give you like a ballpark of things you may be missing in your diet, because this does not have to be super carefully planned if you just get the basics. Even if you mess up this diet, it's probably still better for you <laughs> than eating french fries and hamburgers. So you really gotta keep things into perspective. With that said, I always recommend a B12 vitamin and sometimes vitamin D depending on what time of year it is and where you live in the world because we just don't get enough direct sunlight anymore and vitamin D is incredibly essential. Okay, let's see how they're doing three weeks from now. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. The first three weeks, the first 30 days or so, are going to be really rough, especially if you're transitioning from a standard American lifestyle with fast food and animal products and all of those things that got you where you probably are today if you are suffering with some kind of chronic health condition. So some of the digestive things you may experience like the abdominal pain, the constipation, the bloating, the gas, these are very short-lived, but they can be very profound. So actually I have a video that I'll link right here if you're interested on those topics and it gets more in depth. But right now I'll just mention that if you have been eating the standard American fare, you will likely have some very detrimental bacteria living in your gut. Every bite of food that you eat determines the type of bacteria that are living inside your gut microbiome. So it's really important to feed them right. And all things with fiber are going to provide the prebiotics necessary for the, for the healthy gut bugs to thrive and to crowd out the harmful gut bugs. So again, these whole grains, fruits, veggies, nuts, seeds, legumes, and herbs and spices are going to help those healthy gut bugs flourish. But while you are transitioning, you are going to feel some of this indigestion and discomfort because it does take anywhere from three to like seven or to 10 days max to really rebuild that flora. So you can choose to transition to these foods gradually if that's a little easier for you. Personally, from the people I've worked with and from doing this on my own, I highly suggest diving in head first and just getting it over with. It's really not that bad. And it's so much easier than dipping your toe in and taking year after year after year to finally transition successfully to this diet. Okay, with that said, after the first week, Bill and Vicki were able to overcome some of these more uncomfortable digestive issues that tend to go along with adding more fiber into your diet. But along with that, some other of the more detrimental things they experienced were like the detoxing symptoms, the headaches and the fatigue and the brain fog. Processed foods are so chemical laden. We don't even know what most of those ingredients are on like a biochemical standpoint. <laughs> like we have no idea what these things are gonna do to our body yet. We're consuming them on a regular basis. Like obviously taking them out of your diet abruptly is going to cause some issues. But again, it's best to just rip that bandaid off and get it over with. Bill and Vicki stopped experiencing most of these symptoms after about that eight to 10 days. 
But some other things that can be very difficult to overcome in those first initial weeks and something that Vicki definitely had some issues with were the cravings for those harmful foods that she was trying to remove from her diet. Specifically, she has a sweet tooth. Bill was more of a salt guy. And as you'll hear throughout these videos, that he really hasn't taken that out of his diet because he would just rather live with it. But for anybody taking blood pressure medication, just know that if you remove the sodium from your diet, you will most likely be able to remove that harmful blood pressure medication from your life indefinitely. <laughs> So just something to keep in mind. And I just wanna remind you that I am making separate videos for each of these with more in-depth information on their specific 30-day standpoint. Make sure you check out this video here. But for now, I just wanna cover the highlights. So Vicki did end up losing eight pounds in this first three weeks, which is amazing. She reported having more energy. She felt less sluggish from the foods she was eating. She mentioned that she improved her bowel regularity for the first time in her life. Could you imagine going your entire lifetime never having regular bowel movements? This is so common. Like before I discovered this lifestyle, I didn't even know that that was possible. <laughs> so I totally get it, but it makes such a huge difference in your skin, in your mood, in your comfort level, in your quality of life. Like people totally downgrade <laughs> what constipation can do for you. She also reported having significantly more mental clarity. The brain fog was lifting, the fatigue was leaving. It was a brand new feeling that she was very much ready to be used to. Now some challenges that Vicki experienced during this first three weeks were mainly growing pains, just trying to figure out how to work with these new foods and combine the different herbs and spices and figure out what flavors worked best for her and her family as opposed to the flavors that she was most accustomed to eating the standard American style foods. So thankfully she's always been very savvy in the kitchen. So it didn't take much for her to, you know, find some recipes that she liked and adapt the things that I was teaching her to um, make them her own. So the batch cooking, for instance, she wasn't a huge fan of because she didn't really like leftovers. And most people transitioning to this diet are very, very concerned that they are going to dislike the taste of leftovers forever. But you'll notice that the longer you're on this diet, the more hypersensitive your taste buds become, the more and more you can really taste and enjoy your foods. But this was an issue for the first three weeks. I also wanna mention that by this time, they both reported feeling totally satisfied and not feeling deprived one bit. Like the food actually tasted good to them. Like they were starting to get excited about their new meals. So this isn't some kind of deprivation lifestyle. You literally feel satisfied all day, every day and cannot wait to get to your next meal, but in a more natural, healthy way, as opposed to like craving something all day long and obsessively thinking about what you're gonna, you know, put in your mouth next. It's not like that at all. It's just part of your day, as opposed to the highlight of your day, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I do wanna touch on the social aspects because I feel that that is a huge area where people find um, it to be challenging transitioning to this diet because you are going to go through some growing pains when it comes to figuring out how to tell people about why you eat the way you do and standing up for yourself and not succumbing to their pressures to eat foods that you know are not in your best interest. And soon people just, you know, respect that and support you, I hope. Some people might not, but you know, maybe those aren't the best people to be hanging around with. So this couple tends to go out on Wednesday nights. And one thing that Vicki found that she was able to do is just to order the salad and have the vinegar that comes with it. Sometimes she would even bring her own condiments. So it really wasn't an issue. After a while, you're not even tempted by the other foods on the menu. And believe it or not, there are plenty of plant-based options at, at every restaurant. In fact, if you wanna see how I was able to eat at a steakhouse, you can click on this video here that goes more into the dining out and social aspects of eating a plant-based diet. So overall, within the first three weeks, these two are already seeing dramatic improvements in their health, their mood, their energy, their skin. Yes, there's definitely some growing pains that go along with any transition, but it's well worth it. All right, let's go find out how they're doing in the next month. Now that the detox period was over, at the 60 day mark, Vicki had lost 30 pounds and Bill was down a whole pant size. Now remember, throughout this process, Vicki adhered very closely to my recommendations and Bill kind of wandered off a lot. <laughs> 
but he did his best, that's for sure. He just found a few of those processed goodies a little too um, difficult to give up at first. But as you'll see throughout this process, as his wife showed more and more and more improvements, Bill became more motivated and thus followed suit a little more closely. So he was able to reap more of these benefits as time goes on, but I don't want to spoil it too much. So the couple also reported having their clothes fit better, the excess tummy weight was gone. Again, they saw improvements in their bowel regularity and sustained energy. Like, Instead of having those ups and downs throughout the day, they reported having just a nice, calm, stable flow of energy from the moment they woke up to the moment they went to bed. Their skin had improved so much by this point. You can see it. there's just this vibrant glow. They reported that their headaches with the severity and frequency had both diminished. And by this point, the pain and swelling in Vicky's hands from her arthritis was actually starting to reduce noticeably. She was able to work in her garden without all that pain and for longer durations at a time. But it, she still wasn't at 100%, so we continued um, incorporating those anti-inflammatory foods. All of those herbs and spices along with the oatmeal and the legumes and lots of those antioxidants coming from the uh, berries that she had most mornings. One of the biggest challenges that this couple experienced was having variety in their diet. The batch prepping and the meal planning that I set in place for them was very, very straightforward and very elementary when it comes to a plant-based lifestyle. You can get as elaborate or as simple with these foods as you'd like. So basically each client I work with, I have to kind of get to know them a little bit and get to know their taste preferences and whether or not they prefer to have those batch prep meals or just a buttload of recipes on hand. Vicky was actually more motivated to make a different recipe most days of the week than she was to batch cook and make different meals out of those leftovers. So all I had to do was provide Vicky with more recipes and more resources and how she could incorporate more of these foods into her meals. And she was completely happy. She learned how to spice up her leftovers by using newer, fresher ingredients the day of. So like she would throw a sweet potato into her and her husband's soup that had already been batch prepped, but it tasted nice and fresh because of that added sweet potato. And then they would just season it, sometimes separately, because Bill preferred more spicy seasonings than Vicky did. So as long as you just keep those herbs and spices on hand, every single meal can taste different than the next, even though it's the same exact food. So just learning to work with those herbs and spices and figuring out which flavor goes with what and which flavor maybe doesn't go with another one. For their cravings, they reported that they were still experiencing them, just not as severely and as frequently. Like they were easily overcome by going in the kitchen and grabbing a tangerine as opposed to a cookie and problem solved. So you always want to keep your kitchen stocked. They also reported enjoying these foods even more at the 60 day mark. So they actually were starting to prefer more of these newer foods and meals than their old preferences. So that's encouraging. People think that they have to eat this way and hate their food for the rest of their life. Oh, I can never eat that way. I would just die if I couldn't eat my hamburgers. But your taste buds adapt. All of us adapt to whatever it is that we ingest. So as long as you're eating healthy food, you prefer healthy food. It takes on average 90 days to adapt to any new food. So that's why this program is typically a 90 day program. People get to the end of that 90 days and they don't even wanna go back to the way that they used to eat, regardless of whether or not I'm still walking them through the process. They feel totally confident that they are ready to go out in the world all by themselves <laughs> having this new lifestyle. For the social aspects, they reported that these were getting more and more easy as more time went by because they were able to practice and more people were getting more accustomed to their new taste preferences and their new style of eating. So it wasn't an issue for long. It was basically becoming the new norm. So in all, for the 60 days, they saw more dramatic improvements, preferred their food even more so, and saw less challenges. So, just something to keep in mind if you're considering this diet. Let's see how this couple is doing at the 90 day mark. I am way less now than I did 26 years ago when we got married. Huh. So how much weight have you lost in three months? 
total of 35. Um, I guess it's been about 25 pounds. 25 pounds! After adhering to a whole food plant-based diet, for 90 days, Vicky was down 35 pounds and Bill was down several pant sizes. They looked and felt amazing and their clothes fit better and they were smiling and vibrant. You can just see the difference in these people. They reported that their skin wasn't just glowing, but it was hydrated. They finally felt like they were getting the right amount of water each day. And this doesn't just come from drinking a bunch of water. This comes from the types of foods that you're eating. And if you're taking in a bunch of salt, then your body is going to be holding on to that water and making you look bloated and uncomfortable and forcing your blood pressure to go up. And it's just not going to result in anything helpful. One of the biggest benefits that Vicky received was her arthritis had almost completely disappeared by the 90 day point. So she was able to go back into her garden and stay in there all day, only having very minimal swelling and pain and inflammation the next day. So give her another couple months and I bet it will continue improving. This woman went from wearing hand splints every day to not even touching them, not having any need for them because the inflammation and the pain had completely diminished, all with whole natural foods. They explained how they achieved full bowel regularity. So having a bowel movement most days, every single week. Their energy at this point was so prolonged and abundant that they actually took on a personal trainer. This couple wanted nothing to do with exercise when I first started working with them. They specifically said, give me a diet plan so I don't have to do any exercise and I will still lose plenty of weight. And that's what I provided for them. People think they have to sweat and kill themselves in the gym to get a lean, healthy body, but it's not accurate. Trying to use that method to as a weight loss mechanism is just not highly efficacious. Your diet is what is going to determine your waistline, period. Unless you're a genetic anomaly. <laughs> you cannot expect to eat crappy food all day, every day and have a lean, healthy body. These people were able to accomplish that using whole natural foods alone, but they got to a point where their energy was so profound that they wanted to start incorporating more movement, more natural movement into their day. And they wanted to start getting more toned and lean and healthier. That's what the right foods can do for you. They are your medicine. They turn you back into your best version of yourself after you've been suffering so long in an unhappy, unhealthy body that you might not even be aware of. Until I was able to regain my health, I truly did not understand or appreciate the level of disease I was inflicting on my body through eating the standard American foods every day. Something else that they noticed that I thought was interesting that when they made, what was it? Some spaghetti with like some commercial based pasta sauce. So it had tons of oil, salt, sugar, and um, other preservatives in it. They immediately noticed the night of and the following day, just feeling completely sluggish, brain fog, uncomfortable, and like they had some sort of rock in the pit of their stomach. It was very noticeable. So after you eat this way long enough, you can expect to not enjoy those crappy foods as much as you thought you would. You tend to prefer the healthier foods that make you feel good. It's a completely new experience. So it's easy to stay on track after that 90 days is over is what I'm getting at. The biggest challenges that they're still experiencing at this point are just trying to adapt their old flavors to their new flavors and learning how to cook with these new foods. It's an ongoing process and it takes a lot of trial and error, but all you can really do is experiment and adventure out and try different things and see what works for you. And eventually you, you know, find things that you enjoy and things that you don't enjoy so much and maybe don't make those anymore. Another problem that they said that they had was on the weekends. So basically, the weekdays were super structured, they had all their meal prepping done, and then the weekends come and there's no more food prepped and they're just kind of left to their own devices. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck is when you don't have those healthy pre-prepared meals waiting for you in your fridge or your freezer, you're so much more likely to go off plan and maybe consume something that isn't as beneficial for you as another option had you planned ahead of time. So the weekends can still be relaxing and have delicious 
pre-prepped meals waiting for you ahead of time. Traveling was another obstacle that Bill and Vicki had to overcome. They took several trips during this 90 day period and typically I would just have Vicki pack her salad and whatever fruits and veggies she could bring with her and take it along with. There are some great insulated storage bags that you can bring food along with you wherever you go. And honestly, that's what I've been doing probably for the past decade because I'm so sensitive to gluten that I literally have to make my own food every day, all day, and bring it with me everywhere I go. It doesn't matter what the circumstance. People look at you a little funny at first, but who cares? It's the only way to take care of yourself in this society. There's no way around it. So just get over it and get used to it. And the right people will respect you for taking care of yourself. I mean, it's so crazy that we are ridiculed in this society for eating healthy. It just is so backwards. I also want to mention that Vicky's cravings were still apparent but even less so than the prior month. So as you can see, there's a pattern. They became less and less and less so. And if she sticks to this diet, she will likely have that continue in that trajectory. She still easily overcomes it by um, getting up and moving around or going and having a piece of fruit. She said it was most profound when she found herself sitting down and feeling bored. So just, you know, keep yourself entertained and active and most people will be fine at that 90 day mark. I had an extremely profound sugar addiction, so it took me much longer. It took me at least six to nine months, I feel, to reduce those sugar cravings. So it all depends on your genetics and how severe your sugar addiction was in the first hand before you tried to eat these more natural foods. But the cravings do go away. Now I live in a house where my significant other fully stocks the pantry and the fridge with all of his baked goods and sugary foods that I don't even think twice about. They, they don't bother me whatsoever. So you will get there. <laughs> it takes time, whether it's a preference for salt or the fatty foods or the crunchy foods or the sugary foods, you will adapt and you will move on and prefer these more natural foods. In fact, that's another thing Bill and Vicki expressed is how much they have completely gotten to the point where they simply prefer the whole plant-based foods as opposed to those more highly palatable animal products or processed convenience items. For the social adjustments, they reported that these are no longer an issue whatsoever. When people come over to their home, they provide both plant-based and non-plant-based options and people don't say a word. They are totally happy eating what's available and there's no awkwardness or discomfort and dining out also got easier they just had to you know practice like anything so what i took away from this information and this experience with these wonderful people is that our bodies are incredible machines they are so quick to adapt within months these people went from eating non-stop processed convenience foods and frozen dinners and pizza to eating salads and bean and vegetable tomato based soups and quinoa and sweet potatoes and they not only learned to thrive on this diet but they learned to prefer this diet so basically the closer and longer they adhered to the diet the more and more benefits they were able to see and the more they would prefer this way of living the more they preferred the taste of these foods and how it made them feel in their body and no matter what area of their life, their home, their work, their family situations, everything started to adjust the more time went by. If you are currently on this journey, stick with it. The health benefits they achieved in these three months far outweigh their desire to go back to any of these harmful foods. So what can we take away from Bill and Vicki's experience? The health and lifestyle benefits increased with each passing month and became more and more apparent in different multiple areas of their health and life as they progressed. Challenges became less and less severe and less frequent through each passing month. They learned to adapt to this new lifestyle as they practiced it more and it eventually became the new norm. Their taste preferences also adjusted more with each passing month until eventually preferring whole food plant-based options. Their food cravings were most severe in the earlier parts of their journey and eventually diminished by the time the 90 days was through. 
Their most noticeable areas of improvement were things like their bowel regularity, their energy increased, their skin hydration and youthfulness, the significant amount of weight they lost, the joint pain decreased significantly, the arthritis, swelling, pain, and inflammation was nearly gone, headaches diminished in frequency, duration, and severity, and there was a drastic improvement in mental clarity. And if you can't see it, these people are beaming. They are filled with confidence. Their body image has completely readjusted. They have literally transformed in 90 days. And that is what I absolutely live for. This is something I'm so passionate about. If you feel that you are at all in need of somebody to assist you hand in hand through this transition, make sure you contact me. Just click on the link below for a free 45 minute consultation. All right, guys, don't forget there are several other videos in this series. So if you want to check out any more of these topics in depth, make sure you watch for those. I sincerely hope this was motivating and inspiring if you are considering this journey. And please let me know in the comments where you're at, how things are going, what kind of barriers are you struggling with. Don't feel you have to go at this alone. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.